Hello, how's it going? I hope you're doing well and having a good day so far. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about web browsers, what I use, why I use it, uh, and how to configure and set up your web browser for the best experience. Um, so if you're coming from Chrome or Chromium-based browsers and kind of jumping ship after the recent decisions that Google has made, uh, whether you're on, you know, Chromium, on Google to Chromium, Brave, Opera, whatever, uh, and you're looking at other options, well, you might see Firefox and um, you might download Firefox and then boot it up and realize, wow, this looks kind of awful. Um, and Firefox these days, I hate to say it, but it kind of sucks by default. Now, unfortunately, Firefox did used to be a really good browser for years and years. And while it is still a free and open source browser, um, when you boot it up, you're just going to have like news and ads and like the pocket extension and all sorts of like extra junk that you don't need. Uh, not to mention under the hood, it sends a ton of data back over to Mozilla. Um, so you probably are going to want to either heavily customize Firefox and you could use, you know, a custom user.js. And if you're going that route, I would recommend the Argon Fox user.js, or you can skip all of that excessive steps and just go with LibreWolf, uh, which is pretty much the best Firefox fork available right now. It's a community clone of Firefox. It's, you know, updated very, very regularly, and it comes with the user.js settings that you would want to tweak in Firefox to get a more privacy respecting experience. Um, and it also has a couple of other things by default. Um, importantly, if you're coming from, you know, anything Chromium based, you will probably be relieved to see that it has uh, uBlock origin by default. Um, it ships with DuckDuckGo rather than Google because Firefox, of course, uh, still ships with Google um, rather than DuckDuckGo. So at least DuckDuckGo is quite a bit better uh, and more privacy respecting than Google. Of course, you can go through and customize search for pro providers to use whatever you want there. Um, and LibreWolf updates very quickly when Firefox releases a security patch or a new build or whatever. LibreWolf will update very quickly, which uh, is a lot better than some of the other Firefox forks available. So that's one of the most important reasons to go for something like LibreWolf, uh, just because uh, if you care about security, you probably want to be getting those security updates pretty quickly. Um, and of course, there is a full feature list here and it talks all about uh, the various features that LibreWolf enables for you. But suffice to say, it's essentially just changing the about config settings. Um, and we can actually go into the about config real quick here and just, oops, double the eye there. We can go about to the about config, we can click uh, show all. So this is all the settings that are available for uh, Firefox and LibreWolf and you can go through and change these as you want. We can just show the modified preferences um, and you'll see, you know, we have a bunch of privacy stuff in here that is gonna be automatically toggled either true or false as needed to be as privacy respecting as possible. Um, so this is essentially doing out of the box a combination of between these features and uh, with the ad block already installed. uBlock Origin is pretty much uh, the best ad blocker available right now. Um, and that's going to do features beyond just ad blocking. Um, it's going to overall have a bunch of features that is going to essentially do what a custom user.js plus a bunch of privacy extensions would do for a vanilla Firefox setup. So. That's why I recommend LibreWolf over Firefox. Uh, if I just go to the installation page here, it's far easier to install than it used to be years ago. Uh, it used to be that if you were on like Debian, you would have to compile it, but now you don't. You can just add their repo um, and just uh, install LibreWolf normally with the commands listed here. On Arch, it's as simple as getting it from the AUR. I can open that up real quick. If I just look at that real quick, you'll see, all right, we've got LibreWolf and LibreWolf-bin. Uh, I go for the binary just so that it doesn't have to compile every time I update. I would recommend that if you don't want to, you know, wait around for it to compile every update. Um, and then, of course, if you're on any other Linux distro, you could get, you know, uh, instructions for that or a flat pack app image, etc. They have those as well. Uh, and if you are on Windows or Mac OS and you want a privacy respecting browser, um, then you can get LibreWolf for those. Now you might be, if you're not on Windows, you might be thinking, wow, why would anybody want to use Windows if they care about their privacy? Um, well, if you have to use Windows for work or if you have, you know, apps on Windows that you absolutely must use, then you cannot go without but you still want to have a privacy respecting browser and just be as privacy conscious as you can be while still, you know, being forced to use Windows. Well, there you go. You can install LibreWolf for Windows or Mac if you wanted. Anyway, so 
just um, talking about the, the Libra Wolf preferences again. So uh, we've got this uh, under the hood preferences. We also have the normal Firefox settings menu here that you'll recognize if you've used Firefox. You can, of course, on Libra Wolf, install extensions and themes normally as you would with Firefox. These settings are pretty much all gonna be the same as they would be on Firefox with a few things disabled as needed to, you know, not be reporting data back to Mozilla. Uh, but I do want to go through a couple extensions here that you you might want. So uh, first of all, you'll see I pulled up this device info page, uh, and this is right now spoofing my operating system to say it's Windows 10 or 11, uh, just because LibreWolf tries to protect your you know browser fingerprint as much as possible. But uh, it is able to still get my true operating system core here, etc. Um, and of course, there's more info under this. I'm not going to scroll down because it's going to show my IP, but. Um, there's a ton of info that you could get uh, fingerprinted. Uh, however, if I get an extension like Chameleon, this is the best one that I know of, but if you haven't know of another one that's doing the same thing as Chameleon, uh, but better, feel free to share it. Uh, but this Chameleon extension is just going to uh, spoof my browser profile. Uh, so if I open that up, you'll see I right now I'm on the real profile. I could click random and get a random browser profile. Uh, I could even set it to change periodically if I wanted to change the browser profile like every 30 minutes or whatever. Um, but now if I go back to this page and I refresh it here, uh, you'll see, okay, now it, it thinks I'm on Mac OS. Um, I'm using some outdated Firefox browser on Mac OS, uh, which is obviously not what I'm actually using. So that's what something like Chameleon is good for if you need to be spoofing your browser profile just for that extra layer of, you know, privacy. Of course, you know, uh, you could go through and go to the effort of using Tor for everything if you wanted to, but this is sort of the, the intermediary step there if you wanted. Um, there's also, if you notice, I, when I open a new tab page, it's blank, which thankfully it doesn't have all of the like news and advertisement that Firefox has, but you know, I probably want some like bookmarks, you know, maybe a date time or whatever, some sort of greeting on this new tab page. So for that, I would recommend Night Tab, which is a really clean tab extension here. A new tab extension um it's it's got tons of different themes by default or you can completely customize you know the colors the font the locations of where the bookmarks are placed on the on the page um even you know image backgrounds and if i actually open it up here i think it's got yeah it's got a nice little preview of it uh i can go through and look at different themes um it's got a bunch of really nice themes by default i can you know pretty much change the look however I want. So I really recommend something like like Night Tab. Uh, I, I personally like this one, but uh, of course there's other new tab extensions available. Um, and then on to some other extensions. So you uh, don't get the Firefox multi-account containers by default in LibreWolf. That is something that Firefox ships with that LibreWolf doesn't. Um, Mozilla makes this extension and that's essentially to you know give you different uh, container tabs uh, so that way you can separate uh, accounts per container tab. So if you have like a personal and a work account on the same website, you can keep those separated, but still be using the same browser profile for both. Essentially, that's just going to be separating cookies for you. Um, so this is the official Mozilla extension for this. Um, there's also uh, other non-Mozilla extensions that are going to do the same thing. I looked at this one briefly. It's got an MIT license, so, you know, uh, better than nothing, at least... Um, and this is seems like it's a pretty decent extension to do the same thing. Um, the Mozilla extension has like a specific uh, Facebook container uh, set up. So that way, if you are using Facebook, I hope you're not using Facebook. If you're watching this, I really hope you're not using Facebook. But if you are using Facebook, then you can uh, set up your Facebook tab container to hopefully try to be at least a little bit more privacy respecting than Facebook is by default. Um, so that's tab containers. Uh, there's also this stylus extension, which is pretty much the best uh, CSS, custom CSS styles extension available. Uh, now you could set up custom CSS without an extension. However, it's far easier to do it with an extension. Um, this one's based on something that used to exist for Chrome. I don't know, maybe it still exists. Fork of stylish for Chrome. Anyways, stylus here is really great because it's got uh, user submitted themes as well. So if I wanted to install this and then I could just look through user submitted themes on pretty much any popular site. So I could just look through themes on GitHub and just get whatever, you know, CSS styles I wanted for GitHub. So just customizing the color layout, etc. cetera. Um, of course it has it for YouTube, uh, pretty much any popular site that you're on. 
So it's really nice if you want to be getting a, you know, consistent theming across your browser, uh, across sites that you're frequenting along, you know, with your desktop and you just want to be setting up the, the coloring and the theming to be, you know, however you personally want it. Um, so that's, that's Stylus. And the last extension I want to talk about is Terms of Service Didn't Read, uh, which is a nice little extension that will summarize Terms of Service for you on various websites. Uh, pretty much any relatively well-known website, it will summarize the Terms of Service for you because realistically, who reads Terms of Service? Uh, pretty much nobody. Um, and there might be things in there that you actually want to know concerning, you know, what data is being collected on you, how much privacy you have, um, or just anything else in the terms of service that is like worth noting that you as the user should actually be aware of. Uh, and it's essentially just a user submitted uh, term summaries. It's gonna give the website a grade uh, for how, you know, user friendly the terms of service are, you know, how good they are to you as the user. Uh, and then it will just give some bullet points, you know, discussing how good or bad various points in the terms of service are, you know, essentially what data they're using from you or anything else that you should be aware of uh, when using a site. So that is the terms of service didn't read extension. Um, and those are just some of the extensions you could get. Uh, I just wanted to point those out in particular just because um, I've, you know, used them or, you know, think they're worthwhile to look at. Of course, feel free to comment and talk about any other extensions that you think are worth looking at. Uh, uh, there's plenty of other extensions that I use that I haven't mentioned here. So, um, and I will say though, you're probably not going to need any of those uh, pri pri privacy browser extensions that you would use on Firefox uh, in LibreWolf, just because the ad block and the LibreWolf settings will take care of that by default. So if you're using, you know, clear URLs or HTTPS everywhere, uh, or, you know, decentralized privacy badge or whatever else on Firefox, you are probably not going to need that on LibreWolf. Most of those are just going to be redundant. Um, so you can go through and carefully comb and see if they, you still need any privacy, extra privacy extensions on LibreWolf, but for the most part, just out of the box, it really takes care of the lot, a lot of the stuff you would need. Um, yeah, so hope you learned something. Hope you have a little bit of a better idea of where to go with customizing a privacy-focused browser. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time and have a great rest of your day. Peace.